Okay, I think that you need to hear this. First, today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by me. Me, I'm Carpo. Hi, and I'm your sponsor for today. Because the only product that is worthy of sponsoring this channel is me, because they are my thoughts. I don't use the Dollar Shave Club, and I sure as hell don't use Raycon earbuds, and I don't need a VPN. So, hi. How y'all doing today? On a side note, with my horrible jokes aside, I hope everyone's doing well today. I really do. I hope everyone's having a fantastic day, night, evening, morning, whatever it may be, winter, summer, could be any time of the year. Because that's the strange thing about uploading to the internet. People might watch this video years from now. And I've always tried to keep a lot of my videos relative to the topics that are consistent throughout history. In other words, be able to watch a video talking about mental health or, or uh, you know, employment or whatever it might be. All kinds of random topics that are consistently relevant rather than current events, if you, do, if you will. And one of the topics that I've always <clears throat> really been fascinated with and tried to share the most was talking about self-empowerment. And it has become such a, a cliche at this point that I really don't talk about positivity too much anymore. Uh, years back, I used to make a lot of videos about seeing things positive and making sure that you can see the, the silver lining and everything. I was very much into Zen philosophies, if you will, uh, you know, ancient teachings, all the way up to modern philosophers and a little bit of Alan Watts and a lot of Manly P. Hall and really putting all these in and some Joseph Campbell for the, you know, to make it fully rounded with a lot of mythology in there and trying to understand the root of where we come from as humans and these consistent themes we have throughout history, which can constantly repeat generation to generation. And these are called the archetypes. There's the archetype of the hero, the archetypes of good and evil. The archetypes are the larger patterns, the symbols that represent kind of who we are. <clears throat> and they're very prevalent in mythology. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh, because of this, I, I, I have been so immersed in this for so long and I've been training myself to think positively, that I kind of take it for granted and overlook it. To compare that it would be like using a tape measure. I've been using a tape measure for years, and I've been a carpenter for half my life, so I, I know how to read a tape. And I was talking to my boss at work the other day, and he was saying, uh, you know, the new employee, the, the labor guy, I was asking, what is his skill level? And he's like, he can't really read a tape. And it kind of took me back to like, wow, I had to be taught how to read a tape measure in order to learn how to take certain measurements in order to learn how to do certain things. These are prog progressive. And now knowing all the carpentry skills that I have, I really take it for granted. You can't just say, oh, run this board through the table saw. You have to say, this is how you hold a board on the table saw. This is where you don't put your hands. These are the secrets you have to get it through. Here's a push stick. Here's a feather board. All the different components that go into one tool that I just fly through because it's just how I think. In this exact same way, many of the most valuable tools that I've learned about handling life, stress, anger, frustrations, and uh, depression, anxiety, you name it, I just take it for granted kind of that other people have already learned these tools. And I'm consistently reminded that that's not the case, that a lot of people stress about things, that I maybe even a friend, you know, who texted me earlier saying he was having, you know, he was worried about certain money issues and I kind of sent back a hey man at least you're alive and and he he kind of came back with the you know I the idea that I didn't have enough empathy and I thought about this for a minute and I was like you know I do it's just that my intention is to push you past that thinking of oh no I'm stressing because of what might happen it's this old saying that 99% of our our uh, anxiety, the things we stress about, 99% of them never come true, never come to fruition. We worry about things that have not yet happened and that m probably won't happen. And the ones that do happen, the very few that do happen, even when they do, it's not that bad. It's like we worry about a test that we have at school. Then we get older. We worry about 
work. We worry about our first day at a new job, or we worry about a project that we have to complete on time. Somehow it works itself out. But even if it doesn't, the worst that happens is we fail. And that's okay, because we fail a lot in life. We make a lot of mistakes. There are many things I could have done in my youth to make me a lot wealthier today, to where I'm not, you know, struggling to say, how am I going to pay bills next year? You know, how am I going to, you know, be able to function in this world and buy the things I want, which really is just a piece of land. I, I'm not a material boy, <laughs> so I'm not interested in stuff. I like my music and I like my books and my, you know, projects and my art and stuff like that. But I'm not, if it was all gone tomorrow, I could be fine. And there's kind of an old uh, thought, I guess a uh, thought experiment that I always kind of thrown out there. That if you were stripped of your clothing, if you were stripped of your items, your materials, everything you own in your life and just thrown out on the street. And let's just say your house burned down and you ran out, jumped out of bed and ran out naked. Your house burned down with everything you own. You had no money in your bank account. You had no job. And you're basically just homeless and naked. How well would you fare mentally? Would it completely break you? Would it devastate you? And these are real thought experiments that we need to prepare for. You know, like, how would we handle a situation like this? And for a lot of people, they just end it. Because a lot of people would end it over even losing a job. There are people out there. My neighbor across the street took his own life a decade or so ago. He was a really nice guy. He had two kids that had left home. And we'd talk, you know. He'd do his yard work, do his normal thing. He worked at the mill. And uh, he retired. And he retired owning a home. And he was doing fine. He had money. And he took his own life in his home like a couple months after he retired because he felt he had no purpose. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. I have no idea why a person would do that. There's many different reasons. Maybe he was ill, but according to his kids, who I knew, you know, they, it was just kind of a shocker. And I just thought about this, you know? How important it is that we look at things for what they are and say we can't start over at any time in our lives. Anything we want to do. So at any rate, the point being that his problems were just as serious as everyone else's problems. There are people who are flat broke and older than him who live on the streets and are still able to make it through every day without, you know, and just fighting with that fighting spirit. And there's something to me, I can't help it, to kind of frown at the idea of people who give up. And I know there's supposed to be a certain amount of empathy, but I feel like we need to kind of ridicule it in society, that giving up really isn't an option. I mean, sure, if you have terminal cancer and you're in extreme pain, that's a different story. That's uh, end-of-life quality. But, you know, if you're just worried about losing a job, you just got to fight through it. And even if you're thrown out in the street naked, you got to be able to deal with that shit. And, of course, this doesn't include losing family or friends because these are things that are thrown at us that, honestly, there's no way we can help dealing with these things. No matter how much somebody tells you to mentally be strong when you lose a loved one, you're going to go through the motions and you can't fight that emotion and you shouldn't just the same way you shouldn't fight stress and depression in the, when it's within the realm of normalcy. What I mean by that is depression tells us that there's something that we need to get over in our lives or move past or get ourselves out of the rut that we're in. Whereas anxiety tells us there's something we're worried about. Anxiety can be way out of control, but it can also tell us that we're not doing the things we need to do to survive. And I feel like we do have a lot of intuition and insight into our own lives a lot more than we give ourselves credit for. And uh, we just kind of play this game, the pity game, if you will. And uh, I, I'm kind of on the, the no fear, no pity, you know, train. It's like, hey, we're all fighting equally, but it doesn't mean anybody's problems are less than another. Even first world problems are still problems. They just change. And um, as humans, we have a natural tendency to worry about things. And so it's up to us to use our minds and our intention to basically use mental alchemy, which the original alchemical, if you want to get into the root of alchemy, which a lot of people believe is turning lead into gold. I'm going to give you a very simple synopsis of what this really means. The idea is that once a person has spent so much time 
and so much effort learning about the elements back in time where you know mixing all these different compounds and elements there's a lot of meditative time trying to create gold from lead and at some point you realize it was never about the gold it was always about the lead it was always about the experiment in the same sense that our daily lives it's always about the experience not about the gain or when we get ahead or when we achieve some great dream we have it's about the ride if you go on vacation and you rush to your destination you're going to miss all of what i call the brown signs i'm a brown sign stopper stop at all the sites now I didn't always do that because i was always in a hurry to get to the next place and now i'm learning and teaching myself take it a day at a time take it as it comes just be part of the world See what happens. Talk to you next time.